Up next on Back to the Bible, Warren Wearsby continues to talk about God's Word being our spiritual food. All of God's people possess life. Now, this life demands nourishment. The inner person has an appetite. When you're saved, God gives to you life down inside, and your inner person gets hungry for spiritual food. The way you care for the outer person, the body, must also be the way you care for the inner person, the soul, the spirit. Uh, The outer person obviously needs exercise. Without exercise, you're going to just get flabby and fall apart and die. Well, we're supposed to exercise ourselves unto godliness. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. For bodily exercise profits a little. That means for a little time. It's good. Nothing wrong with it. But godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. That's why in verse 7, Paul wrote to Timothy, exercise yourself rather to godliness. The outer man needs exercise. The inner person needs exercise. The outer person needs cleansing. We take showers or baths. We wash our hands frequently during the day. We keep ourselves clean. Why? Because dirt leads to disease and infection and trouble, sickness. Well, the inner person needs cleansing. Psalm 51, David prayed, wash me. He says that in verse 2 and in verse 7. Wash me. We need to be cleansed within. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in me. We need to come to the Lord for cleansing of the inner person. Now, the inner person needs to be clothed. Just as the outer person needs to be clothed, we wouldn't think of going out in public without clothing. Well, the inner person needs to be dressed up as well. Colossians chapter 3, Paul describes the garments of God's grace that need to be worn on the soul, on the inner spirit. He tells us to put off the dirty things, you know, put to death uh, fornication and uncleanness. Put these things off. Get rid of them. Verse 8 of Colossians 3, put off anger and malice. Don't, Don't wear those things to church. Put off the old man. Put on the new man. He talks about that new man in verse 12. Put on tender mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering bearing with one another and forgiving one another. Oh, that's the kind of garments of God's grace that need to be on your soul within you. Now, the outer man has to be clothed. The inner man has to be clothed. The outer man has to be cleansed. The inner person has to be cleansed. The outer person has to be exercised. The inner person has to be exercised. And just as the outer person has to be fed, So the inner person has to be fed. If you don't nourish the inner man, the inner person, you're going to have weakness and sickness. And this is not good in the Christian life. Now, what is the food for the inner person? Well, it's the Word of God. The Word of God is bread. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. Man shall not live by bread alone, said our Lord Jesus, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now, he's quoting here from Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. In Deuteronomy, Moses is speaking to the children of Israel, and he was telling them to take the word of God in their hearts, not just to look at it or listen to it, but to receive it into their hearts. The word of God is bread. The word of God is milk. 1 Peter chapter 2 Peter writes about this, and he says in verse 2, As newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. Now, he doesn't say we should stay babes. We should not have the diet of babes constantly, although you never outgrow the need for the milk of the word. We should have the appetite of babies. The word of God is the milk that helps us to grow. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, the word of God is meat. Notice what he says in 1 Corinthians 3, verse 2. I fed you with milk and not with solid food or meat. For until now you were not able to receive it, even now you are still not able. 
for you are still carnal. He goes on to describe their carnality, envy and strife and divisions and so forth. But the Word of God is solid food. It is meat. In Hebrews chapter 5, we have uh, an expression that is used there about the spiritual milk and meat of the Word, Hebrews 5.12. For though by this time you ought to be teachers. In other words, you've been saved long enough to be teaching others. You need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. He's a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, the mature people. That is, those who by reason of use, by reason of practice, by reason of exercise, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So the word of God is bread and milk and meat. It's even honey. Psalm 119, verse 103, How sweet are your words to my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Now, my friend, if you can't make a meal out of bread and milk and meat and honey, there's something wrong with your spiritual appetite. The Word of God comes to us as life-sustaining bread. Bread was a staple of the diet back in Bible days. It comes to us as milk so that even the youngest Christian can receive it. It doesn't take any effort. Milk is pre-digested food. And by the way, far too many Christians are living on milk. The preacher studies all week, and he prepares a message, and people come to church and just take it in. The little baby at mother's breast doesn't have to expend too much effort. She's the one that expended the effort. Ah, but you can't stay on a milk diet. You have to move up to a solid food diet. You have to grow some spiritual teeth to be able to grow in the things of the Lord. God's people possess life. Life demands nourishment. Growth glorifies God because the more we grow, the more we become like the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, food nourishes us not when you look at it or admire it, but when you eat it and digest it. You're listening to an encore broadcast of Warren Wearsby series, Pictures of the Word. We hope you're enjoying it. When you're in the middle of the daily grind, wouldn't it be nice to have a reminder of God's presence, of his promises to you and his word? Well, that's what you get with GoTandem. GoTandem is a mobile app that walks with you throughout your day, bringing customized Bible content to your smartphone or email. I said customized because once you download the free GoTandem app, you'll take a short survey about your spiritual needs, and that determines the content you receive. Plus, you get to choose when you want your messages to arrive, up to 12 different times a day. Whatever you need to focus on, from overcoming temptation to building healthy relationships or even having hope during uncertain times, GoTandem can help by bringing God's Word into your life throughout your day, every day. So download GoTandem to your smartphone today. Remember, it's free. Just look for GoTandem. That's Go, T-A-N-D-E-M. Or visit backtothebible.org. Why not take some time today to read, reflect, and respond to God's Word in your life? Here's Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me and know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all together. You hem me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. That passage was from Psalm 139. Tomorrow on Back to the Bible. God's people possess life. Life demands nourishment. 
Now nourishment leads to growth. The new birth is only the beginning. Thank you for being a part of today's broadcast. We invite you to tune in again to the next Back to the Bible as Warren Wearsby continues to talk about God's Word being our spiritual food. We pray it makes you hungry for more and leads you forward in your relationship with Christ.